me, Dr. Lee, and thank you for joining me. We're talking about being sick and tired of being sick and tired. Scrutiny. Are you sick and tired of being sick and tired of being un of scrutiny? Let me define scrutiny. Scrutiny, critical observation or examination. Sometimes in life, we can find ourselves in a place where it seems like our eyes are on you for whatever reason. Maybe you're good at something and people are checking you out because you're so good at it. Maybe you are even just new, new at something. Because sometimes you can be doing something that's new and people are not used to seeing you do this or maybe you're new to an area maybe you're new new at a job or maybe you're new to a city or town you moved in or you knew at a church and people will watch you and they'll put you under scrutiny like they examine everything you do and they'll be like wondering like okay you know what's this or why he should she or she doing this or you know who's that with them or you know maybe you just moved to a new neighborhood well how they afford to get over here you know she looks kind of young or okay he's the wrong color he's the wrong height he's too old you know people oh you can't live over here and you know saying you just uh they may say well you just uh you just pick up uh garbage you know you work for the city you pick up garbage and you know a garbage collector don't make that kind of money or maybe you're a school teacher school teachers don't make that kind of money to live over here so why are you over here they must be selling drugs they must be this or that or doing something illegal and people will make up all kinds of stuff and they don't know your story where you've been from why you doing they just come up with some stuff and it happens in church too. So if you're a person that goes to church and you decide that you want to be a deacon, a deaconess, a, a minister, or evangelist, whatever you want, like being an usher board in the choir, and you know, like I said, when they're, anytime you're new to something, people are going to really put you under scrutiny. They're going to really examine everything you do. And you could just be somebody that loves the Lord. Make, I'm going to make this example. You could be somebody that loves the Lord. You just moved into a town. You go on and visit churches like you should do. See, you know, where you have a a, 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 a good fit or you like, you know, what's going on at, at the church. However, you go to the church and you go a couple of Sundays. Okay, I like this church. And the church is not like, you know, a church with a thousand people or two thousand people or whatever. You know, it's not a big church like that. You know, it's where you kind of look around, see most people, you know, there. And you kind of know who look different this Sunday. Because, you, you know, it could be one of those smaller kind of churches. And you and you know, you notice more the smaller the congregation is than the one of those big, um, big churches or whatever. But let's say you come to um, the church. You say, I like this church. Then they say, you know, you say, you know what? I, um... I enjoy singing. I would like to sing in the choir. And then you decide to talk to the choir director about singing in the choir. And, and they was like, okay, sure. And then when you go into the choir, okay, here you go. Here come the, the trouble start. They want to know, okay, first of all, can the person sing? And whose spot she trying to take or he's trying to take? And, you know, we already got a lead singer. This person want my position. They don't sound that good. You know, we don't know nothing about this person. They could have a, 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 a background we don't they may like to steal they you know just all kind of foolishness or craziness or whatever then some will go to force oh yeah um you know he or she could be looking at you know whoever the pastor if it's the pastor male or woman they trying to get close to our pastor or they trying to get close to dick and so and so or they try you know just a whole bunch of mess a whole bunch of confusion it has nothing to do with god but because of those people they a lot of times don't even know that they're being used by a how can I say the devil? Let me just say it that way. It's been used by Satan, and they are tearing somebody up that really just want to sing in the choir. And they had none of those things, you know. There, you know, they could be happily married or have in a relationship and hadn't thought none of that stuff that these people are, are thinking. But all because they decided to come to a new church and decide to participate in something. Now here come this group, you know, maybe not the whole church, maybe it's just a group of the choir members. You know, trying to figure out, you know, put them under scrutiny. Who is that person? That person, they, they cute. They know that they seem better than me. They don't sound better than me. So and so, you know, I come from a family of singers, you know, or whatever. And just keep the stuff going. But with that, just know that if you're sick and tired of being sick and tired of people, you know, putting you up on a close examination, what you have to do is stay focused on why you're doing something. If it's something, like I said, the choir example, if you're going to sing for the Lord, 
know that you're singing for the Lord. You're not there to be in a social club or to make people like you or say I have the greatest voice. Maybe you have to sit there a year or two before they ever let you even lead a song. Maybe you don't ever lead a song, but you know what? You don't have to lead a song. You can sing all day and night at your house, in your car, wherever, as long as you're singing for the Lord. A lot of times people get that stuff bent, especially if you're doing it for the wrong reason or not the right reason. A lot of times people do stuff because their mama I'm told them to do it, their grandma or, you know, their family did it this way for so long with somebody, you know, always been the, you know, you know, everybody, um, all the piano players of this church always been from, you know, just make up a last name, the cucumber family, you know, and everybody that played the piano and now this person come in and they got like mad skills. They can play that piano, you know, they can read the music, they can uh, play by ear, they can do all of it. And they always say, well, they can't play that piano because the cucumber family, they've been playing that for the last 100 years and we just can't have that. Why are they coming trying to break up tradition? And so you go through all, all that. And you best believe, if it's meant for you to play that piano, the Lord will open that door. If he had to, to strike the, all the cucumbers, you know, out that church for whatever the reason, have all them leave, or they get so tied up and busy and confusion that they'll be begging for a new piano player to come. Or whatever it is that, you know, that people like to put you under scrutiny for and examine you. But just know that if you're doing something new, if you're new at a job, you're new at a school, and people don't, let's say they don't know you, they were like really no scrutinize and then people might mean, scrutinize for other um other reasons so if if it's something that god wants you to do or you feel like god has called you to do know that you will have a lot of scrutiny because satan don't want you to to you know saying he he don't want you to be um growing in the lord he don't want you to um uh, to put your hope and trust and know that you're benefiting the kingdom of God. You know, you're helping not only yourself, but your family, your children. You may be breaking curses. You are helping other people. So he'll put you on attack and try to make things, you know, like about you. And then what will always work for me is say, you know what? It's not mine anyhow. It's not mine. This is about the Lord. I didn't talk to um, some of you all and it was like, well, you know, I don't know how you do it. You know, I would like to do a YouTube channel, but I don't know if I can deal with the people. There's so many crazy people in this world. And, you know, and of course, you know, when you get on these, these channels, people are going to attack you. But no, they're just not attacking you. It doesn't matter if it's about Christian videos or if it's about drawing or, or whatever. You know, it's going to be somebody that always got something negative to say. But no, you're not doing it for that uh, reason. Let's take, for example, because um, you probably didn't seen that video I did with Kobe Bryant. The last time I, you know, well, I'm, a, I'm like 100% sure that's the video to date that has the most, uh, the most, the most views to it, however. But, you know, when I was doing the, vi um, the video, I, I did it, you know what I'm saying? Like, because I prayed about, should I do this? You know what I'm saying? Should I do this? Lord, um, no, you know, da, da. but anyhow, I did um, the video and to be innocent to be obedient to do um, by doing the video but with that you know i didn't really think you know what would happen in the video you know yeah you like okay uh, i hope that you know kobe sees this or whatever and but more than that that it does what the lord wants it to do I and mean, whatever that is because i'm not god but with that with that um video by especially by having so many views then you, know, you get all kind of you know oh like one lady told me she said when you're light all kind of bugs are come so you get all kind of stuff and, and that 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 has nothing to do with the the um the the video that you have how can I say you have people and you get come under scrutiny but you cannot worry about that because Satan wants you to focus on okay the Lord told you to do a YouTube channel he told you to go be a minister he told you to be a deacon but you worry because people not gonna like you people not gonna say you know what you can be a deacon holding the collection plate you know they say I don't like the suits he wear oh no why he got them kind of shoes on I don't like that color on him, you know, and some of it will get the nerves to come and tell you that, that you can't mind those people. You can't even pay no attention to any of those kind of people. Just know that they're being used by Satan and they don't even know it because you didn't get up that morning and try to impress them with your suit anyhow or with your hair color, color or cut or whatever. They're just going to be complainers. They're going to find stuff and they don't even know that they're in like the, the plan or the scheme or things of Satan to try to break you or to make you um, feel bad. So if the Lord has called you to do something, if he's called you to do something in ministry or he called you to be, you know, to go back to school, to be in the medical field feel or whatever it is just know that 
you will have opposition. You will have people, you know, putting you, you know, up under a scrutiny. And they will come out and say, well, all kinds of stuff that don't pertain to anything that you're doing that you can't control. But know that you're not doing it for them. So that's what gives you the strength and the energy to teach, to keep going. Don't worry about, like, the views. If it's YouTube, I tell people, don't worry about trying to get all the views or that, you know. Worry about if you don't have well, one person that God wants you to touch. Worry about touching that one person, and because it, it, you know, these videos I make now, they you know, saying they have less views than the, um that Kobe Bryant video. But most people that watch that video, they're coming for some other reason. It's not the, the to to learn about God or whatever. You know, to it's for whatever reason that they come, maybe just for entertainment. But if you know anything about the Lord, this is not entertainment. I'm not here to entertain you. I'm here to help myself grow. And to point as many others to the Lord. So know why you're doing something. So if it's singing in the choir, if it's usher, if it's starting a business, if you say that you want to be a medical doctor because you want to help people, know that's why you went there. You went there to help people. If you want to be in the criminal justice, be a lawyer because you want to help people, do not get sidetracked by other things like money and what people say. Know that everybody's not going to like you. Everybody's not going to appreciate you. But if you know why you're doing something, it does not matter what they think. If they like you, good. If they don't like you, good. You are doing it because you are doing it because, one, you felt like God led you to do this. Two, you know, you say, I enjoy doing it. And three, I feel like I'm helping. And I said, and helping who? Some people say, well, you're not helping nobody but your, um, yourself. Good. That's the best person to help. You help yourself first, then you can help others. So that's even better. Like if you're on an airplane, what they tell you? They say, put your mask on first. If something happens, put yours on first before you try to help somebody else. So don't let people in their negative comments keep you from doing something or stall you from doing something, especially if you're supposed to be doing something in ministry and you're scared because of what somebody may say. Or somebody may say, well, so-and-so sing better. Who cares? Who cares? I can't sing at all. But you know what? It doesn't even, it doesn't even matter. If I go to see and that's what the Lord want me to do, I'm doing it for him. So have that attitude. And I'm going to pray. Father, I come to you. Send on 1 Corinthians 4 and 3. In your word, it says, I, however, am very little concerned at undergoing your scrutiny or that of, the, of other men. In fact, I do not even scrutinize myself. So, Father... I just thank you and your wonderful God. And may I just continue to grow in things of you and not worry about other people's observation or examination. If I am being obedient to you, that's what's important. So, Father, I love you. You're an awesome God. You're a wonderful God. And just thank you for everything. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And so, with that, just know that you'll be put up under scrutiny in whatever you try to do. And know that you're not perfect. And just be guided and led by the Holy Spirit in all that you do. And know why you're doing something. And then people can't steal it from you. Satan can use all his tactics or whatever to try to make you feel like you're doing something wrong or this is not right. But just put your hope and trust in the Lord. And with that, I need to um, point out because I did not read this Bible verse. But I want to read it to you before I go. Um, the one I just prayed on because I have two down here and I want to let you know where it came from 1 Corinthians 4 and 3 I got it from the WNT and this is the Waymouth New Testament and it says I however am very little concerned at undergoing your scrutiny or that of other men in fact I do not even scrutinize myself and this is Paul talking and then he goes on in 1 Corinthians 4 and 4 um, in the WNT says though I am not conscious of having been in any way unfaithful Yet I do not, for that reason, stand acquitted. But he whose scrutiny I must undergo is the Lord. So know that you must undergo the Lord's scrutiny. That should be what's most important in you. Don't let the haters and the naysayers keep you from doing something you know you're supposed to be doing. Know that scrutiny is real. It comes with the territory. And anytime you're trying to branch off and do something, better in your life to do to do a new position that satan will come and try to hurt your feelings break your emotion break your strength your trust your courage do not let him win the battle you stick with it and do like i always tell you do let go let god and keep it moving you know maybe it hurt a little bit maybe it's a punch maybe it's a little cut or something to your soul or your spirit but you just keep going keep 
go and show the naysayers what they say don't even matter because they will attack any and everything that you do it may not have nothing to do with what you're trying to do but just to break you don't don't let them break you so if you came across this video and you do not have a relationship with jesus christ all you have to do is repent of your sins and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And if you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, all you have to do is continue to grow it. Grow it, grow it, grow it. Be the brightest light you can be. Read your Bible. Walk in obedience and pray, pray, pray. And know that whatever you do, no matter how small, how large, how big, don't try to avoid people or dodge people. Do what the Lord tells you to do because no scrutiny is going to come with it. But that's not even important. What's important is that you're being obedient to what God has told you to do. Let the Holy Spirit guide you you again read your bible walk in obedience and pray 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 i'm dr lee let go let god and keep it moving take care